and welcome back. Week three, you've made it. So um, we'll go through a sequence of all the poses that we learned in the final week of our beginner series. So we're going to start in what is called easy pose, although sitting cross-legged doesn't really feel easy, especially because we end up sitting a lot during the day. So it can be a little tricky. You can sit at the edge of a blanket. So if you take a blanket and fold it up underneath you, you want to just sit so your pelvis kind of tips forward and the knees drop down a little bit. If you sit on a blanket and the knees stay at the same level, it really hasn't helped your situation any. So we want to kind of tip that pelvis forward. So we're going to sit up nice and tall with the spine long, shoulders again, as we've talked about a lot, trying to relax them. And it's nice to just sit with your palms facing up. It's a gesture of simply receiving whatever you need from this practice. So if you're comfortable closing your eyes, go ahead and close your eyes. And as we talked about, we turn inward here. We begin to, just by simply closing the eyes, we tune out that outer world, we tune out our field of vision, and we're able to begin to take our gaze inward. We're able to focus on ourselves. Breath in and out through the nose. First, just observing your own breath without trying to affect any change on it, just noticing how it feels in you today. Feel that gentle rise, that lift of the chest, opening of the ribs, expansion of the belly, and simply on the exhale, the reverse of that belly drawing in, ribs coming together, chest descending. making sure that your tailbone is rooted, that you've slightly engaged your core so that you can lengthen the spine. So we're pulling down through the tailbone and we're reaching up through the top of the head. The ribs are moving up away from the hips. And we try not to have our shoulders move up towards our ears, but we keep them drawn down. And now if you'd like to activate the Ujjayi breath, you can. So it's that slight constriction in the back of the throat. We breathe in through the nose. And then as we exhale, we kind of just constrict those vocal cords a little bit. And we make that Darth Vader noise as we exhale. Allowing us to focus our attention even more on our breath. Notice your breath getting longer and more calm. And if you like to set an intention for whatever you need from this practice today, go ahead and just set that in your mind. let the eyes open. We'll inhale, take the arms up high. Exhale, bring your left hand to your right knee. So just crossing across the body. Our right hand's going to come right behind the spine like a kickstand. We're going to take an inhale and lengthen through the spine. And exhale, we're going to begin to just apply a little pressure with that left hand to begin to twist you around gently. Both hips stay rooted to the earth, so we're balanced through the weight in the hips. And we just begin to twist. Maybe if it's safe for your neck, you begin to take your gaze over your right shoulder. And with each inhale, we think about lengthening. With each exhale, we think about twisting. And maybe we actually lengthen the spine. Maybe we actually twist a little deeper. Good. One more breath here, rinsing out our internal organs, lengthening the spine, getting some movement in the spine as well, realigning it, getting flexibility improved in the spine. And then we'll slowly untwist. Take those arms up on an inhale, 
Exhale, right hand to left knee, left hand behind you like a kickstand. So it helps prop the chest up. And we keep the chest over the hips. We don't want to lean back or lean forward in our forward in our twist. And then we press the right hand into that knee for leverage. Draw the shoulder blades down. Inhale, lengthen through the spine. Exhale and twist. Inhale, lengthening, lifting up out of those hips. Exhale, twisting, maybe looking over the left shoulder if that's a safe movement in your neck. Inhaling length, exhaling twist. Giving those internal organs a little squeeze on the other side. We'll slowly untwist the spine. Good, and let's bring the feet out. So we'll take the feet out, knees are bent. You can keep your weight in your hands. We're gonna take the right ankle and we're just gonna cross it over the left knee. That may mean that that right knee is up by our face. We're gonna try to press it away a little bit. We're gonna sit up. Sometimes I like to flip my hands around so my fingers are facing back. So I've got a little more strength in my arms to press down, to lift me up with a long spine. And then depending on the flexibility of your hips, that left leg might be further out with the right knee further away from your chest. Or if you've got more movement in your hips, you might take that left foot in closer, sit up tall, and let that left knee be in line with the left ankle, but the shin is closer to the body if, you're, if you've got a little more flexibility in your hips. So we'll take just a couple breaths here, just feeling that right hip, maybe you feel a little bit of something in the low back, but as we talked about, like. You might feel something in a whole lot of places <laughs> in any given pose. So just as you breathe, become aware of that part of the body where the sensation is. And imagine breathing breath into that part of the body to kind of move some energy, release some tension, and just feel better, feel more comfortable in your own body. And we keep that right angle, just pressing into that top of the left knee to keep the leg active in this pose. And then we'll lean back a little bit, swing that right ankle off the left knee, and then cross that left foot over. Left ankle on top of right knee now, sit up nice and tall, press those hands to the earth, and then take some time to notice how this hip feels. It'll be different than the other one, of course, because our bodies aren't completely even or balanced. Yoga allows us to bring the left and right side into more harmony, so over time, they become more close. But as we begin, especially in early in our practice, we notice pretty sizable disparities sometimes between the right and left side of the body. So we give both sides the equal amount of love and attention, equal amount of breath and focus. And we just invite the body to open up, to be more comfortable over time. Imagine again that breath flowing through the left hip, swirling through the hip to just clear out any tension, any blocked energies, and give you a little more flexibility and mobility. Then we'll slide that left ankle off of the right knee, and we're going to lay down for a reclining hamstring stretch. So take your strap with you as you lie down. We'll bend both knees, bodies just resting on the floor, easy. Head and shoulders on the ground. We're gonna bend the right knee and take your strap around the ball of your right foot. So we never want the strap on the arch. We don't wanna strain the arch. We use the strap where there's a bone so the bone can resist against the strap. So make sure the ends of the strap are even. And then we'll go ahead and press that right ball of the foot to the sky. Press through the right heel. And as we talked about moving in opposite directions, we're also pulling down through the right hip and then we draw the right leg towards the body. And you'll notice there's kind of this natural point where it stops. So we just stay there and breathe. Keep the shoulders resting on the ground. And just pay attention. Pay attention to how this feels in your hamstring. And just breathe there for a few breaths. And just these simple actions that we repeat over time start to open up the body. And you might not notice it from one day to the next, but over time you'll realize, hmm, maybe this pose used to be difficult and now it's easy. 
maybe my leg was, you know, at a certain degree and now it's at a much more um, intense degree over time. So just giving your body some time to open up. So keep pressing out through the heel and keep pulling down through the right hip, pressing the ball of that right foot to the sky, and maybe even um, engaging the muscle above the right knee. When we engage the front of the leg, it helps release the back of the leg. Good, let's bend the knee. Allow that right foot to come down to the earth. Maybe you slip that left foot in before, switching sides. And then we'll press the ball of the left foot to the sky with a strap around it. Arms on the ground, elbows bent. Just begin to press out through the heel and down through the hip. And gently begin to draw the left leg towards the body. And again, just noticing you'll find that little point of resistance where you've gone to your range of motion. And then just stay there and breathe. And maybe the breath allows a little more release in the pose over time. And as we think about the breath, if you want to match the breath to this pose, as you inhale, you can lengthen the leg. And as you exhale, just imagine drawing that leg closer to the body. Inhale, pressing out through the heel. Exhale, drawing the leg towards you. So it doesn't even have to have a movement actually associated with it. It can just be the thought of lengthening through the leg and the thought of drawing the leg towards you energetically. And then try not to like cramp your hands by like, pulling so hard on the strap. So let the strap not too tense in the hands, but find that nice balance where you're not overdoing it. All right. So we've had enough on that left leg. We're going to release that. And we're going to come up to standing in mountain pose. And we'll begin to move through some of our sun salute Bs. Good. So we'll first begin in mountain pose, just rooting through the feet, allowing the spine to be long, allowing the breath in the body, shoulders rolled down, hips stacked over the um, heels, shoulders stacked over the hips, belly tucked in, tailbone tucked down, shoulders drawn down. So let's take an inhale, we'll sit to chair pose. Arms can be out or they can be in goal pose, cactus arms. Exhale, we're gonna fold out over the legs. Inhale, halfway lift. You can always have your blocks by your legs for the inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. We're gonna step back to plank. So take one breath in plank. Let the knees come to the ground, leaving those, remember we just bend the knees leaving the knees behind the hips, and then we slowly lower down, elbows tucked in by the body. We'll take a cobra, lift the chest, squeeze the elbows, engage the legs, the glutes. Exhale, lower. Inhale, lift up to down dog. Exhale here. Inhale. Exhale. Now we're gonna take the right leg and we're gonna place it between the hands at the front of the mat. We're gonna spin the back heel down. So the left toes point in the direction of the left corner of the mat. We inhale for warrior one. So we take a deep bend in the front knee, left hips trying to rotate around and left ribs are trying to rotate around to the front. Good, take the hands back to the earth. Step the right foot back, come to your plank pose, let the knees come to the earth and then slowly lower the chest. Inhale to cobra, lift the chest, use the strength of your back not the hands to lift you up. Exhale, lower down. Press back to a down dog. Take a breath here, inhaling. Exhaling. Look between your thumbs, place the left foot up at the front of the mat. Maybe you have to help it with your hand to lift that foot forward. Right toes are gonna to point to the right corner. We rise up for a warrior one. Arms can come up, straight overhead, or they can be in goal post arms. Good. And then we root through the back foot, pulling that right hip forward, pulling the left hip back to level out the hips. Good, building strength in the legs, building lung capacity. Good, and then we'll bring the hands back to the earth. Take that left foot back. Bring the knees down, slowly lower the chest. Inhale to cobra. Exhale back to down dog. 
Good, hips are high. You can bend the knees nice and deep, laying the ribs on the thighs. We'll take a breath here. And then we'll look between the thumbs, step the feet forward. Inhale, hands on the shins or the thighs, halfway lifting. Exhale, fold. Inhale, bend the knees, sit to chair pose. Exhale, stand up to mountain, let the hands come down to the chest in prayer. So that's our sun B. We'll just do one for today. You can do as many of those as you want. Sometimes we'll do three in a practice to really get focused into our breath. Chair pose, you can have the feet hip distance apart or you can have the feet right together. We're gonna sit the hips back, reach the arms out or take the arms into cactus. Tailbone points down, we get a nice bend in the knees, a nice bend in the ankles. So we're building strength in the legs here, building our foundation. Sit down nice and deep. We always want the hips above the knees. We never want to sit down with the hips below the knees because that'll strain your knees. Good, the weight's back in our heels here. So the toes are light. Good, building a little heat in the body. Nice, let's take an exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reach the arms out and up. Pull the hands through, coming to mountain with the hands at the heart. Next will be major at pose, a balancing pose. So take your gaze, focus it on one point in front of you, something that's not moving. So if your pet's in the room with you, wandering around, <laughs> try to look at something else. So we'll root through the left leg, lift the right heel, and just float your right knee straight out from your right hip. Make sure your shoulders have not leaned back or pitched forward, but that our shoulders, our hips, and our heel are all lined up. Flexing that foot can help as well to keep you balanced. Then notice if your right hips kind of come up, can you keep the right hip in line with the left hip? Hands can be in prayer, they can be open in cactus, they can be over your head, wherever feels good to you. So we're learning balance. Maybe you even are courageous enough to close your eyes for a moment and feel how many little times you're about to tip over. The foot's continually adjusting for you. Let's consciously place that right foot down on the ground. Stand in mountain. Close your eyes and just feel the right side of your body. Well, then feel the left side of the body. Just notice the difference. We'll root through the right side, lift the left heel, and then just gently begin to lift that right knee. Right knee comes straight out from the hip, flexing through the heel. Press down into the right leg. Wrap those muscles up around the bone. Shoulders, hips, and heel all together in one line, belly drawn in, shoulders relaxed. And then close your eyes here. Just feel all those micro adjustments that the body makes, the little wobbles that are constantly happening in any one-legged pose. Heightening your awareness of that, and then open your eyes back up. It's much easier to balance with eyes open, huh? But just have that experience. Be okay with feeling the wobble. Good. And then we'll slowly, purposefully put that left foot back on the ground. Major up. Now we'll go to a low lunge. So we'll inhale. Standing mountain, take the arms up. Exhale and fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Let's step the left foot back. Leave the right foot at the front of your mat. We'll take our um, high lunge, or low lunge, sorry. We're going to let the back knee come down. So we're gonna rise up, pressing into the foot, lifting the fingertips up. Good, hips are level. Pressing down into both the right foot and the top of the left foot. Hands come to the earth. Take your blocks with you for this pose. And we're gonna take what's called half splits, half Hanuman or runner's stretch. So we begin to straighten the right leg and we get the blocks on both sides of the right shin. You can keep the right knee bent as well. And then we're going to begin to fold over the right leg. Pressing down into the heel, pulling the hip back. And just folding, just folding, she says, right? <laughs> you feel your hamstrings and your low back and your Achilles and your calf. It's a lot going on here. The toes keep pulling back to wake up the back of the leg. We activate the muscles in the front of the thigh by lifting that right kneecap up towards the hip. You know, we just feel the whole back of that right leg. It's 
So black skin help, they can elevate you, press down into the hands on the black, so you can just pull forward, long spine. We inhale and lengthen. We exhale and soften. Let's place that right foot back down on the ground. Place your hands on the ground. We'll step back to a plank. Let the knees come to the earth. Slowly lower the chest between the hands. Inhale, lift up to cobra. Exhale, lower. Let's come up to a down dog. And then just walk those feet up to the hands. Inhale and halfway lift. Exhale and fold. Inhale, reach the arms out and up. Exhale, hands back down to your heart. So those little movements, those vinyasas connect the poses. Inhale, take the arms up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. We'll step the right foot back this time, leaving the left foot at the front of the mat. Let that back knee find the earth. Release the top of the back foot to the ground. And inhale, rise up, low lunge. So we're stable here by pressing down into both feet, by squeezing the thighs towards this imaginary middle line, and by gently drawing the left hip back and the right hip forward. Hands can be in goal pose. Good, let's take an inhale, and as we exhale, hands land to the earth, we find our blocks again. We begin to shift the hips back just a little bit. So the hips stay over the back knee, so we don't slide the hips behind the knee. We get the hips just over the right knee. Left toes pull back towards our face, and we begin to fold. So the left knee can be bent, right, or it can be straight. Hands on the blocks, we inhale and lift. We exhale, we begin to fold. Inhale and lift. Exhale and fold. Inhale and lift. Exhale and fold. If the high level of blocks is too much, you can take them to the mid level, you can take them to the lower level. And we keep pressing the left heel to the floor, toes pull back towards the face, belly draws up and in. Kneecap on that left leg is pulling up towards the hip, so the left thigh is active. And we just send a little breath, a little love into that left hamstring, into the calf, into the Achilles, just waking it all up. Good, and then we'll just bring that left knee back under us and we'll take a tabletop pose. So bring the hands gently under the shoulders, tuck the belly in, lengthen through the spine. Head is neutral, neck is neutral. And just take a breath here. Good, and then we're gonna come down onto our backs for our figure four reclining. And then a little happy baby and legs up the wall and you wrap up your breakfast. So we're going to lay out, bend the knees, take the right ankle and just cross up over the left knee. You can stay here if that's enough of a stretch in your hips, just applying some pressure with that right ankle against the left knee. Or you can begin to lift that left foot off the ground, interlace your hands behind the thigh and press the ankle against the left knee. Press the left knee away, and then with your hands, energetically pulling that left leg towards you. And if you've got uber open hips, you may wrap the hands around the knee, letting that left ankle come closer to the glutes. And just noticing if the hip feels any different now than it did at the beginning of our movements. This isn't a really long practice, so you may notice no difference, or you may notice a difference just by simply warming up through the movements we did. And let's just take that right knee, right foot off the knee, sorry, across the left knee, over the right. You can leave the right foot on the ground to start and just see how that feels. Then float the right foot up, see how that feels. If it's still okay, take the hands around the thigh. If you don't feel anything in the stretch, then Release the hands, wrap them around the outside of the knee. Keep pressing the left ankle into the right knee, pressing the left knee away from the body. And then gently playing a little game of tug of war with the hands, drawing the hands, pulling the right knee towards the body as the knee presses into the hands. Leaving your shoulders and your head just simply resting on the earth. Breath 
and the tension draw onto that back tip area. And just checking in with how that feels. And then we'll gently release, taking that left foot off the knee. Let the feet land. And then we'll come to a happy baby. So we're going to take the right foot right to the sky, left foot towards the sky. The knees are bent really deep. You can take your hands behind the thighs and just gently pull the knees towards the shoulders, towards the armpits. Or you can take the hands to the outer edges of the feet and play a little game of tug of war here as well. The hands pull the feet down as the feet are pressing into the hands. We leave our shoulders and head just resting on the earth. Putting a little compression on the hips here and lengthening the spine. So the whole spine just flattens to the earth. The tailbone might curl up. So see if you can apply a little pressure to push that tailbone back towards the earth. And then reconnect to your breath. Draw that attention back to the breath if it's drifted away. And then we'll just let the legs float up again as we've finished our second week's practice of just letting the feet float like two balloons up to the sky. So the knees can be bent, especially if the hamstrings are tight. And we just allow the blood flow to kind of draw back out of the legs, to kind of lighten the legs. And here, sometimes it feels nice to do some circles with your ankles. You can take the circles in opposite directions. It can also feel good to point and then flex the feet so you get into those ankle joints, give them a little movement, a little flexibility. Good. And then we'll just bend the knees, let the feet land to the earth. Let the legs extend out for Shavasana. Palms face up. You can close your eyes if you're comfortable doing that. Again, if you've got back issues, the feet can be at the outer edges of your mat, and the knees just drop in towards one another. So gravity just supports, the, or the bone structure supports the legs, but gravity just lets the knees drop together. Take a long, slow breath in. Open your mouth, sigh it out. And then just let your body be received by the earth. Just feel the support underneath you, the floor. And maybe you take a scan of the body, just noticing how it feels. How are the feet and the ankles, the shins, the calves? Sending some healing and energy through those parts of the body and into the knees. Noticing the quads and the hamstrings, how they feel now. Bring your awareness into the hips, all the way from the base of the spine and tailbone, moving up through into the low belly. Checking in with your ribs, sending a little healing to all those internal organs. Feeling the ribs and the chest. Feeling this relaxation and ease move into the neck and the jaw cheeks, the eyes, the forehead, top of the head, and then feeling the hands relax, the fingers soft and easy, the backs of the hands, the palms, the wrists, feeling that relaxation move through the forearms into the elbows, the upper arms and shoulders. And just see where you can let go. Where can you soften and just be a little easier?
Shavasana is this important time of rest, of receiving all the healing and all the benefits of this practice. You can stay in Shavasana longer if you like. Otherwise, you begin to move the fingers and toes. Maybe rock your head side to side. Let's just roll to one side, just pausing there. Using the hands, just gently pressing up to seated pose. We'll complete the practice the way we began. Legs crossed, palms facing up, long spine. And take a moment of gratitude to yourself. You showed up, you rolled out of your mat, and you were present in your own life, taking care of yourself. But there's a thousand, maybe a million reasons not to roll out your yoga mat, but there's one reason to roll it out, right? To take care of yourself, to be whole, to replenish, And to just vibrate, to shine in your highest vibration so that you can show up in your own life as your best self. Let's draw the hands together at heart center. Namaste. Bowing to the highest in one another. Thank you so much for being part of this adventure with us, for spending all this time learning and growing. And um, we look forward to seeing you on your mat in classes. Thanks.